Hi, I'm Steve Otto. Everything you've ever wanted or needed to know about love, you're going to find out right now. <laughs> Dr. Helen Fisher is in the house. She's a biological anthropologist and the author of a wonderful book called Anatomy of Love. Good to see you, Helen. Thank you. Delighted to be here. Um, love is a complex subject, is it not? Oh, gosh, it's what, it makes the world go round. I mean, we pine for love. We live for love. We, we kill pine. for love. We, we die for love. It's one of the most powerful brain systems that ever evolved. But do we really understand it? Well, I'm trying to do exactly that, you know. Um, I mean, I've studied the evolution of it. I st we've put over 100 people in brain scanners, and we know what happens when you fall madly in love, when we you're rejected in love, and when you're in love long term. So, yes, we're beginning to understand what love is. You know, it's a brain system, like the fear system or the anger system. Uh, it evolved, and it evolved for important reasons. And the book, mm -hmm. based on a, the research, describe the methodology. Oh boy, well, the, I, the, um, it took me 10 years to write this book. It first came out in 1992, and then they called me uh, a couple years ago and they said, well, all you need to do is, we want to, it's a classic, all we want to do is, you know, just write a new introduction and a new final chapter. And I said, oh, no problem. Well, then I read the book. It was 25 years old, so I've really rewritten the book. But I had to relook at uh, divorce in um, 80 cultures, uh, adultery in uh, the genetics of adultery, uh, and where we're going in the future. I mean, the, it's a, it's a, it's a, an opus is what it is. <laughs> it really is. I tell you, there's so many parts of this that I find fascinating. One of them in particular that struck me was that you say there are four different types of, is it personalities? Oh, yes. I love that part. It's some of my newest stuff, so, yes. So, so, okay, the four <clears throat> different types. Yeah. Explorers are? Uh, it, those are people who are very expressive of the dopamine system in the brain. Um, they are um, risk takers, novelty seekers, curious, creative, spontaneous, energetic, uh, but extremely curious people. I think a good example, um, well, most of the people on television are. Uh, we you are. also have to be very quick. Uh, they've got to have a lot of interest. They go, uh, they're more li most likely to go to college. They make the most money. They also lose the most money. Uh, Do we fall in love with other kinds of people? got builders, directors, and negotiators. Yes. Are we better in love with another so, uh, they tend to fall in love with people like themselves. They really? Tend to, yes, absolutely. They want somebody who's equally energetic, equally curious, equally creative, wants to jump up and ride bikes through New Jersey on the weekend. Don't we go compete? to compete? No, I don't think they do compete. These people are very, they're, they're autonomous, they're independent, and they want a partner to be with them. Uh, everybody competes to a certain extent, but sure. uh, these people are, uh, they're very um, exploratory, exploring people. Builders. Exactly opposite. These are people who are very expressive of the serotonin system in the brain, and they t uh, tend to be traditional, conventional, follow the rules, respect authority, uh, um, meticulous, orderly, uh, tend to be more religious. In fact, there's a gene for religiosity that is actually in the serotonin system. And they're so, they, they, they conform to social rules. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a particular gene in the serotonin system linked with social norm conformity, and it's most uh, prevalent in China and Japan. Is that we right? see it in America. A good example would be Mitt, Ram M Mitt, Mitt Romney. Romney. Yeah, or, or even Ted Cruz. I mean, these people are almost standard examples of the high serotonin builder variety. And they would not be they're too great with an explorer. You know, they go for people like themselves. Traditional goes for traditional. But, uh, um, you know, some, some uh, people want the energy of the explorer because mm. they are more traditional. And sometimes the explorer will be going around the block a million times, and mm. finally in their mid-40s they want to settle down, and the mm. builder becomes very attractive to them because this person offers home and family and st stability. Tell me about the directors. They're the high chatter. testosterone type. and if you High you know, testosterone oh, type? Oh, yeah. I mean, take a look at uh, uh, Trump, for example. His problem, Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's aggressive, assertive. Uh, um, they tend to be analytical, logical, direct, decisive, very direct. Look at him. Uh, uh, Bill, I'm sorry, you said analytical and logical? Uh, uh, are we this, still talking about Trump? <laughs> I don't, I'm no, sorry, I don't I just, think we are. I, just, but, uh, I wasn't sure where we were going um, with this. One doesn't have all of these characteristics, well, but sorry, these just, are characteristics that are linked with the testosterone okay. system. I think Steve Jobs is another good example. Uh, Bill Gates is a good example. Okay. Um, uh, Hillary Clinton is a good example. She's a tough-minded girl. Uh, oh, you said strong testosterone. Yeah, she, you know, um, Margaret Thatcher is a very good example of a high testosterone woman. A lot of what women, is that? Oh, you're confusing me now. Uh -huh. High testosterone women? Yes, you can be. Um, there's a lot, there's high testosterone women and there's high testosterone men. There's high estrogen on, men a and there's high estrogen Whoa, women. Whoa, wait yeah. a minute! Sorry. I'm getting thrown off here. Yeah. Not all men are high testosterone, is the bottom line. Some of them are very... I mean, look at uh, um, Gandhi. 
Okay, you but know, you're talking about women who are high testosterone. Yeah, women. right. Are they more, am I confusing terms, they're more masculine? They tend to go in, they've got some mass, they have what we would call masculine traits. They're high testosterone traits, really. Um, they, uh, you, you see them in big business. Uh, high wow. testosterone women go higher up. They're less interested in home and family. They're more interested in career. You'll see middle-aged women, as estrogen goes down, unmasking testosterone, they will become more assertive, more aggressive, uh, more analytical. I, I have so, uh, eight or nine uh, producers, all of whom are women on yeah. our team. Um, I'm trying to figure out what categories they fall into, but basically they tell me what to do. What, what, <laughs> they're um, probably high. Well, you know, don't forget we're a, a combination of more than just one. These are brain yeah. systems, they're not cubbyholes. And the fourth, of course, is the high estrogen type. The and, negotiators? Yes, the negotiators. Uh, they are uh, good people skills, good verbal skills, imaginative, intuitive, emotionally expressive, empathetic, uh, more trusting. People pleasers? Uh, definitely people pleasers. That's my wife, yeah. Jennifer. Sure. And you probably are the high testosterone. But you must also Very be... Very high. Yeah, you must also I'm be that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makes no sense, I'm but sorry. But you're probably also high um, uh, dopamine because, uh, you know, a person in your kind of job needs to be spontaneous, needs to be curious about a lot of things, et cetera. So you're probably the high testosterone and high dopamine. She may well be the high estrogen and dopamine. Is, is she creative? She's just very curious? well matched with someone with a big ego and a narcissist. Okay, that, I'm that's joking. good. She's high estrogen. Yes. Oh, why is it you say that men fall in love quicker? Because they do. You what? Know, yeah, we have uh, data on, uh, I've got data on over 30,000 people. I'm the chief scientific advisor to Match.com, the internet dating site. And you are. We, uh, and we um, do an annual study called Singles in America. We do not poll the match population, we poll the American population. So it's, a, it's it. based on the U.S. Census. Men fall in love faster. They not only because? fall in love faster, they, well, because they're so visual and because we they're are. less picky. Uh, but also, uh, they fall in love more often. Uh, when man, a man does fall in love, he wants to introduce the person to friends and family sooner. They want to move in sooner. Yes. They have more intimate conversations with their wives because women have their intimate conversations with their girlfriends. And men are two and a half times more likely to kill themselves when a relationship is over. So bottom line what? is men are more romantic. We don't handle women. it well? No, you don't handle it well. So if my wife You're were to romantic. leave me, hold on, if my wife were to leave me. <laughs> yeah. Jennifer, you watching? If she were to leave me, I mean, I adore this woman. Right. If she were to leave me, I would have a hard time with it. Everybody has a hard time with it. But I would have a dis. Nobody I would have gets a hard out alive. Nobody gets out alive. I mean, but the bottom line is we've put these people in the machine, brain skinner. And what happens when you've been rejected in love? Uh, there's more, act a lot of activity in brain regions linked with intense romantic love. You don't fall out of love with them. No. Um, deep uh, uh, activity in brain regions linked with attachment. Um, yeah. Cheating. You yeah. said something fascinating in this book about cheating. Yeah, I studied cheating. Yeah, you say. All of our cameramen are great, tremendous cameramen. Steve Barcy has a smile on his face as I say this. <laughs> you say that cheating is not necessarily, you said it's a primordial instinct and is not necessarily a sign that you are not in love with the person you're cheating on, yeah. which I'm confused by. Yeah, well, first of all, let me tell you that, you know, everybody likes to talk about cheating, but the real hallmark of the human animal is that we bother to pair up at all. We are a pair bonding animal. We do form pair bonds. We fall in love and we make long-term partnerships. So yes. that's what makes us really unusual. 97% of mammals do not bother to pair up their run. Uh, pair up to rear their young, and people do. So let's start off with that. But yes, I've looked at adultery in over 42 societies. Uh, we know some of the genetics that probably play a role. And if you ask somebody why they're adulterous, they will give you all kinds of, of, of explanations. Like, what do you, you know, think the reason is? I'm sorry, I There's you. many, many reasons. Many, many reasons. People will say, well, I wanted to get caught and pa patch up my marriage. I wanted to get caught and get out of my marriage. I wanted to supplement my marriage. I got lonely when my partner was out of town. I, I um, wanted to solve a sex problem. I want to a walk on the wild side. That's a whole lot of psychological explanations. What do you think it is? She was hot. But the, well, that'll that'll work too. No, but, but what do you think the real reason is? Well, there's got to be some Darwinian evolutionary reasons or people wouldn't do it in every culture in the world. Really? So one has to also look at why did this evolve? I mean, why do we even have this propensity? By the way, I am not endorsing it in any way, but trying You're to understand it. it. <clears throat> I style back a million years. If a man has a wife and uh, two children, fine. But if he occasionally goes over the hill and sleeps with another woman and has two extra children, he would double the amount of DNA he's going to pass into tomorrow. Those children will live and pass on whatever it is in that man to be susceptible to adultery. And with women, a woman could get um, extra re resources. But you're talking about extra children. You're talking about yeah. children that are 
Wait, yeah. you're confusing now. Who's to say that you want to have other children with another woman? You don't necessarily want to have other children with another woman. But you're saying that's a drive for a lot of people. I'm, okay, from a Darwinian perspective, if you have four children and I have no children, you live on and I die out. That's what Darwin said. So the bottom line is it's not how, wow. how smart you are, how pretty you are, how much money you make, how okay. much you do television. It's how many children you have to really? pass on your DNA to tomorrow. That's basic natural okay. selection. I, I, okay, I so basically, I... if you have more children, you're going to pass on more of your DNA. And I... adultery enabled you to do both. So I think what we really have is um, a dual strategy, a tremendous drive to fall in love and pair up and rear our children as a team, and also a propensity to adultery. And the more we know about this, the more we can focus on trying to solve it. Before I let you out of here, I've got to ask you about antidepressants. You say we are using them too much, and it impacts our ability to express yeah. love, be in love. Steve, you ask great questions. Thank you. I don't know the answers. <laughs> I just have the question. Go ahead. Well, um, uh, this is a hypothesis still, but um, when you take an SSRI, a serotonin booster, yes. Prozac, Paxil, the newest ones, Lexapro, et cetera, you're driving up the serotonin system in the brain. That jeopardizes or pushes down the dopamine system. The dopamine system is linked with feelings of intense romantic love. You take these drugs in order to, um, uh, to um, feel less emotion. And, of course, romantic love is all about emotion. So right. the bottom line is I've come to believe that um, these drugs can dampen and even jeopardize your feeling of intense romantic love and feelings of deep attachment. Now, some people need these drugs to get up in the morning. I'm not talking about them. But psychiatrists from Harvard actually even say that about 73% uh, of people on these drugs don't need them. And basically, they're mm. numbing their brain systems for romantic love and attachment. And I get an email from somebody around the world almost every week, somebody who says, my wife and I were madly in love. She went back to school. Uh, we've been married 11 years. She wasn't doing well. They gave her these drugs. And six months later, she comes to me and says, uh, I want a divorce. I can't feel anything from, for wow. you. Yeah, one person you said it's like... I'm sorry. Well, one person said it's like the invasion of the body snatchers. So, I mean, what is a world without love, for Christ's sakes, you know? <laughs> I can't even imagine it. Yeah. Uh, real quick, one more quickie. Yeah. Um, online dating, yeah. your thoughts on it? Well, as I say, I'm chief advisor to Match.com. But be objective, It's the newest Go. great thing. I wouldn't work with it if I wasn't objective about okay. it. I want to but, but right it's Love on the online dating, how much could you really get this? Mm -hmm. Ah, that's the point. Look at the you connection between us. Get, by the way, the only real algorithm is your own brain. These are not dating services. They're introducing service. We can introduce you to somebody from the right background, the right level of education. Yeah, well, where's the, the chemistry? Right interest, but you've got to get out there yourself and meet the person. The only real algorithm is your own brain. So that's the point. We can introduce you to a million people, but you have to get out there and do the work. We can't do that for you. Is love forever? Well, the brain system for romantic love is forever. If we survive another million years, we will still be following in love, just the way we did a million years ago. Well, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, do you mind if I plug your book? I'd be delighted. It's called The Anatomy of Love. The author is Dr. Helen Fisher, uh, A Natural History of Mating, Marriage, and Why We Stray. You see that, Steve Barfi? These cameramen, I'm telling you, they're learning something every day on this show. It's great stuff. Uh, Helen, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. It's great stuff. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by TD Bank, Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey, Suez, Qualcare Inc., Choose New Jersey, NJ Best, and by New Jersey Sharing Network. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Chamber of Commerce, the statewide voice of business in New Jersey, and by bestofnj.com, covering all New Jersey has to offer. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.